teach people about wine and people get kind of out of hand when they meet me they think that I must just travel to wine country and drink wine all day right sounds like easy street but there's a lot of things I have to think about there's a lot of things I have to learn and hard decisions that I have to make like spit or swallow <laughs> people get the wrong impression of me and one of the worst things about being a wine educator or in the wine business is that you have to hang out with wine geeks all the time. We call them cork dorks. Have you heard that before? <laughs> and they get out of hand with tasting the wine. The tasting notes, like Robert Parker, Wine Critic, or the wine magazines, have you read any of these? I mean, out of hand. Let me give you an example of one I read yesterday. Firm and generous, with a plush mouthful of fruit erupting on the palate. Ending with a long, hard finish. <laughs> Woo! God, I need a cigarette after something like that. I'm a little embarrassed to put out all the bottles. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's appropriate. Is it five bottles a week? Is it seven? I have a stash in my garage. You know, I start trying to work down. But then I came up with the perfect solution. Under the cover of darkness, I put my bottles in my neighbor's bins. So my garbage men think my neighbor has a serious drinking problem. <laughs>a chef to one of the 100 richest men in America so he gets to cook fancy food to heads of state ambassadors all the time and I think that's why nobody will have us over for dinner you know he's a chef I'm in the wine business they think we're gonna be you know just making a list right but it's not like that there's a dirty little secret in the chef world and I don't know if you guys know this but when chefs are not working they eat junk food, okay? Mike thinks that cereal is one of the four food groups. Count Chocula, Cap'n Crunch, Rice Krispies, we got the whole spread, okay? But if my neighbors could see him nuking his frozen corn dogs and washing them down with our past blue ribbon, I think they'd invite us over. Our eight-year-old daughter, Michaela, thinks she needs a cell phone. So I said, listen, Michaela, you can get a cell phone at the same age as I got a cell phone. And she got really excited about it. Mommy, mommy, how old were you? And I said, 32. <laughs> I think they're a little confused about us at her Catholic school, the nuns. They're not really sure about our family. It doesn't kind of add up. And she had a project where she had to draw a picture of her parents. So she had a picture of Mike with this big knife and then me with a huge glass of wine. So I think that, you know, they think her parents are an axe murderer and a lush. And they're definitely wrong on one of those, for sure. I won't tell you which. But uh, when she started critiquing the wafer and swirling her wine at the first ingredient, it was a seriously proud Forrester moment, I have to tell you. age appropriate but you know some women really don't get this and have you seen those sweatpants they have like cute little things written on the back of them I mean juicy on the back of a 20 year old I mean that's kind of cute but on the back of a 43 year old it's just false advertising you know? <laughs>